Do you know that I pray every night that he would escape? What the hell did you do that for? You don't believe in the boogeyman. You should. And with that, I want to say welcome to our third episode of DNA Film Wars, our first review episode. We are super excited about this. This is what we founded this podcast in the first place for. Um, but before we get started today, I really need to issue a correction. Last episode, I said that I believe that the director of Pet Cemetery was going to be the same director as it. The um, its director is Andy Muschietti. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. But he is not directing Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is being directed by Kevin Kolsch. Sorry if I'm butchering that name as well. Uh, Kevin Kolsch uh, has co-directed two films, as far as I can tell, Starry Eyes and Holidays. I have not seen either. Uh, neither have I. Um, he's also directed three episodes of the Scream TV series, which I didn't watch any of. I have. It's not bad. All right, so uh, with that, I think, uh, as you all know, we... Went and saw Halloween this weekend. Just saw it a couple hours couple ago. A couple hours actually, ago, yeah. yeah. Actually. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask Dylan, what are your what were your initial reactions? When we first stepped out of the theater, I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, there were certain moments that, that just didn't quite work for me, but for the most part, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll say about the same thing. Um, parts of this movie are great. Oh, yeah, for sure. Parts of this movie are mediocre, <laughs> which... Uh, <laughs> I found very disappointing. I uh, I was going in. I was I was super hyped. I was more excited about this movie than Avengers, Solo, or The Incredibles. That's fair. Which is saying a lot. Uh, for it to come out less than great is a, is a, is slightly disappointing. But uh, you know, I'll still say you know it's not a bad time. <laughs> nah, no, nah, definitely not. All right. So uh, our our review structure, as we've talked about a little bit before, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna re- review. The story, give it a rating, uh, then acting, and then we're going to do a third category. Uh, we first referred to it as production values, but that's that's a little too narrow. We're going to include production values, which are like effects, um, lighting, sound, etc. We're also going to talk a little bit about the directing in that section, as well as pretty much whatever else we haven't covered. in Like, like the technical aspects of the Yeah, of whatever else we haven't covered in story and acting. So, um... And of course, our rating scale is going to be good, bad, or meh. If we say it's good, that means that we, if you haven't seen it yet before listening to this, that means that we think you should go out and see it. It's definitely worth worth your seven bucks or whatever it is. Uh, if it's meh, we're going to say, hey, you know, it's up to you. You listen to what we had to say and then you can decide for yourself whether you think it's for you or not. If it's bad, that means it's a skip for everybody. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I've seen some bad movies that can be a fun time. You still might want to might go out and enjoy. But all right, yeah. So good is bad, as they say. That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, all right. Well, let's dive right into the to the story. Well, what are you what are you thinking so far? All right. So the things I like about the story. So Lori is like this paranoid doomsday prepper type oh, character. Oh, for sure. I think it was a really cool story element. I uh, I I really think they did a good job with that part. I think that. Lori's character in this film overall is great. Oh, most definitely. And that's going to be one of my problems, is I don't think the film focuses on her enough. Definitely. They kind of get sidetracked. We'll talk a little bit more about <laughs> that later. Uh, another one of the really, th- really good things, I think they did a great job of making Michael scary again. You know, if you watch the last few Halloween films, before, the Rob, Z- before Rob Zombie came back and took it over, Michael kind of got, it got really campy. And Michael was not scary. And even in Rob Zombie's remakes, it was sort of so over the top that it just kind of took away from the realism of it all. Mm-hmm. I thought for the most part, they did a good job of like, when Michael comes on screen, it's just like kind of, oh crap, here he is. What's going to happen? I mean, you know what's going to happen, but <laughs> how is he going to do it? <laughs> you know, and I thought, uh, I thought a really interesting thing that they were able to do with this movie is Laurie's relationship with her daughter you know her daughter is kind of estranged um from her she got taken away by child services we're told when she was 12 and she never was given back and just the way they kind of play on that relationship and how it evolves as they learn that michael's back and everything some of the bad elements of the story i'd say first of all the character dr sartain in this film who is 
god awful. Yeah, who Laurie terms the new Loomis. Well, he, <laughs> he's not the new Loomis. He tanks this movie right at the beginning. Around, I guess it's probably the beginning of the third act. His character just goes so off the rails. I, it, it, yeah, it shocked me. I was like, oh, like he, yeah, he literally kills a cop, puts on Michael's mask because Michael's knocked unconscious at the time, and proceeds to throw Michael in the back of this cop car with Lori's granddaughter, and uh, and run away with them, and run away with them, and I'm. It's just, it's so bizarre because, and then it, it only lasts about, it's like two or three minutes because then Michael wakes back up and of course kills the guy. But uh, it's just like, why was, his character was so unnecessary. Why why did you need that plot element? It just totally took away from the realism that they were trying to establish. Um, Also, a character I did not like was the granddaughter. Oh no. And they focused a lot on her this movie. I would say that she is given almost as much screen time as Lori is in this movie. And her backstory, I mean, not her backstory, but her story in the film with her and her boyfriend. And they go to the school dance, which... Nobody asked for. Nobody it. asked for. It's not even necessary. It's literally just there so that we can see her break up with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend never shows back up. Try to try to flesh out that character, but it really doesn't help or work. It, it so. doesn't, yeah. And, and it's just pointless. And I guess if I think about it, they probably thought that they needed a teenager plot line to trying to appeal to that younger demographic. Yeah, get, get the get the teens in the theater. To appeal to that younger, and you know, I'll say that that the theater we went and saw tonight was filled with people our age or younger, younger mostly younger. We actually had a had a kid get kicked out. We of had a couple, theater, so. yeah, a couple get kicked out for being too young. Um, which I understand that, but when you have a an opportunity like this, when you bring back Jamie Lee Curtis. And you have an opportunity to really make a really great story between her dealing with Michael, dealing with the memory, and then dealing with him coming back. And then also, why is Michael so obsessed with her? And you have a great opportunity to tell this great story, but then you get sidetracked with all these other unnecessary things because you think you have to appeal to a certain demographic. I mean, I'll point to uh, uh, Logan for an example. It really veered away from your typical superhero target audience, you know, young kids and teenagers, and it really went with a deep character study of, you know, Hugh Jackman's uh, Wolverine and uh, Patrick Stewart's Professor X. But it still made a lot of money because it was a really good movie. So you don't have to necessarily fall back on these genre conventions that I think this film really struggles with. Um, well, that being said, though, I mean, I wouldn't say the granddaughter scenes are, are all bad. There's some scenes at the end that I can kind of get behind her on to a degree, but still overall, just that's a no for me. Yeah. Didn't, didn't ask for her. I, I say towards the end when they're all fighting Mike, fighting Michael in the house, it's... I'm, I'm, she's not bothering me as much. Oh, another major issue I had. Uh, so they kept... I thought for sure that Michael was going to talk at the end of this movie. Because they say it right at the beginning of the movie. They set up this Michael speak with the the uh, documentary filmmaker sitting there on the prison lot. Like demanding that he talk. And then the doctor... Uh, he Like at a couple different times, he he he's obsessed with Michael speaking. And at one point he says, maybe Michael will speak if... He sees Jamie, or I me. Mean, I'm sorry, Lori, or whatever. So I thought for sure that when him and when Michael and Lori had this, her their final confrontation, that he was going to talk, but they just kind of dropped it, and he never spoke, which I thought was kind of bothersome. Not that I really wanted him to, but at the very least, they needed to have a moment where it we thought he was going to, and they never had that. So it was like this big setup for nothing. They had a sequel baiting ending. Oh yeah, yeah. Where, oh yeah. Michael seems to be trapped in a basement, but in the last shot... He seems to be missing. He's not in the shot, and the basement's burning down around, you know, burning, because Jamie's caught him in this trap and is burning down the house, which kind of bothered me. And the granddaughter is holding the knife in the back of a truck. Yeah, so so what's going on there? Comedy overload. I I said in our discussion, I was worried about... Danny McBride. I was worried about Danny McBride being on this project. Because I didn't want to overload it with comedy. Some of the comedy works in this movie. Oh, the, this 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 kid in the movie is is one of my favorite parts, honestly. Okay, I wanted to talk about that because yeah, there's this 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 girl and she's babysitting this kid, and of course Michael shows up and kills him. First of all, it's pointless because the babysitter is only in this movie to add to the kill count. Oh, for sure. And this kid, she's babysitting this kid, and he he's kind of foul mouthed, and he's it's funny 
until Michael shows up. And then they're still playing it for laughs as Michael's killing her. Like, he literally says, Michael's sitting there stabbing the girl or dragging her. And he's like, I don't remember exactly what he said. He said something like... He runs downstairs and he tells her her boyfriend or whatever, you know, don't go up there, you're going to get killed. Yeah, he's like, oh, don't go up there, you're going to get killed. I feel like if you're trying to have this realistic, serious movie... You should have him react like a real eight-year-old or whatever it was, screaming, yeah. begging for, you know, help and not dropping these one-liners. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, that's, that's, it's just taking, and it's a lot of scenes with this movie where they just take it too far. There's a scene with these cops in the car and they spend like five minutes talking about what they're having for lunch. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, I get it. It's not funny. A completely pointless scene. And it wasn't even funny to start with. It was not funny two minutes in. And so, yeah. I wouldn't say all the comedy, though, is, is completely contributed to Danny McBride. I mean, some of that can probably be can be attributed to the director of this movie. Yeah, the director. David Gordon Green, who is he's, pretty much known for comedy. So Yeah, he's directed Pineapple Express, The um, Babysitter, or The Sitter, I guess it's called. Yeah, he also directed Your Highness, which starred Danny McBride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the comedy, I thought they took a little too far. Um, and finally, the last thing I'm going to really harp on is... It's loaded with needless characters and kills. I feel Cops, like... The babysitter. Yeah. The, the babys- kid. The The woman that he bashes her head in with a hammer or whatever. At the beginning, no need. Just the other lady I, he stabs in the throat at yeah, the beginning. Yeah, I feel like a super... If you wanted to make a super great horror film, every kill needs to have some kind of meaning behind it. Like, for example, at the towards the beginning of the movie, or at the end of the first act, he like uh, he hunts down these documentary filmmakers that came to the prison at the start of the movie, and he kills them because he wants his mask. I can understand that. You know, he goes after Laurie. Obviously, I understand why he's going after that. But other than those attacks slash kills, the rest of them are just for body count. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I don't know that kind of that kind of bugged me, but um, I've talked for a while. <laughs> you got anything to say about the story? Um, the story. I mean, I can agree with you for the most part on your good aspects. Lori is the best aspect of this movie, aside from Michael, obviously. But um, Lori is definitely definitely a, a really great part of this movie. They should have focused on her story more instead of focusing on the granddaughter, who kind of became the the main character there for a. a, a decent chunk of time and yeah just they're in the second act really they didn't work didn't work nobody asked for that um i really really enjoyed the the beginning of it and i thought had they gone with the aspect of these um these uh, investigative journalists going and talking to michael and trying to get Lori's perspective on it and maybe trying to see if Lori could talk to him i thought that that would have been that would have been a cool aspect but going into the negatives of that um they just throw away those characters at the end of the first act for absolutely no reason and it almost makes me wonder why they put him in there in the first place other than to set up michael getting his mask michael is really scary in the movie i mean i wouldn't say necessarily really scary but i mean he's as scary as he's been in a long time and that was really fun to see uh the relationship between Lori and her daughter is a really is a really cool aspect their their family dynamic is is definitely one that is um that has got some some problems yeah for sure um and it's relatable, like, I mean, not necessarily that your grandmother's a weapons hoarder, but <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, a mom and her and her mother... Just don't get along. Don't get along. Happens all the time. <laughs> oh, for sure. Definitely. But they've had some problems in their past, and you can you can definitely understand why they don't get along, but at the same time, at the end of the film, at the end of the film, um, when they end up reconciling, and, and she, um, she finally understands why Lori raised her the way she did... And helped her to grow up to become a strong person is a really neat dynamic. The bad aspects, you're definitely right about the doctor in the film who's supposed to become the new Loomis or whatever, but he just does not work. And he definitely goes off the rails there during that during the beginning of the third act, and I have no idea what the point of it is. Because it just completely came out of nowhere. I mean, he's in this film in a couple scenes. at the be- He's in the beginning, and then he's in one scene toward the beginning-ish middle of the second act after the bus crashes and Michael escapes. Yeah. yeah. I just say was I... also pointless. Yeah. And well, the bus crash, I mean, it needed the bus to happen. Cra- the bus crash wasn't pointless, but him being there was, yeah. I mean, was not I... necessary. And then he gets shot, and then he shows up later in the film with a cop, and then he runs around with this cop, and then all of a sudden, just out of left field stabs this sheriff in the in the neck repeatedly 
And yeah. then uh, takes Michael and throws him in the back of a car with Lori's granddaughter, and they drive down the road to Lori's house. Yeah, I had to say I saw it coming. I mean, you could tell they were setting it up with the, like, you can't kill him. He said you can't kill him a couple of times before this all went down. And he, he was, you could tell he was obsessed with Michael. I could tell where they were going with it, and I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. I was right. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, and then I was terrified. Because he, he literally, like I said, he takes Michael's mask off and puts it on. I was like... They're not going to pull some really stupid Oh, I thought stunt. they were going to pull some really awful plot twist and say he's actually Michael. Yeah, or like he just I take over like, as Michael for the rest of the movie. I was like, oh no. I was no. like, oh Please boy, don't. This, this movie's about to take a real <laughs> that south turn. But. Um, uh, also, like you said as well, the, the granddaughter aspects of the movie didn't work for me. Her entire storyline with her boyfriend is stupid. No one asked for it. We don't need a teen romance drama going on in the middle of a R-rated Halloween movie that we've been waiting 40 years for a good sequel for. Well, we haven't been waiting. We haven't been waiting for years. <laughs> Other people, but <laughs> but yeah, pointless. The sequel baiting at the end. Wish they hadn't done it. They should have made this movie and left it at that. Killed Michael off at the end. Had Lori kill him at the end would have been the best option instead of just burning the house down I thought it would have been cool had she had she unmasked him at the end yeah. and looked into his eyes to see if he was really the evil person that Dr. Loomis said he was and then yeah. maybe pop one right in his head right yeah, between the eyes shoot him in the head that would have been that would have been a, a really cool ending for me and, and not worry about a sequel but I they definitely had that set up, and I think if this movie makes enough money which it definitely will considering based on the theater that we went to um we're probably going to be looking at a sequel here in a couple years. Oh, yeah. Not only a sequel to this, we're going to be seeing another Friday the 13th. Oh. oh. Another Nightmare on Elm Street. We're going that'll to be, be seeing remakes and reboots all over the place. They'll be pumping these slasher movies out like No Tomorrow. Um, the comedy does not work in certain in certain spots of this movie. There are some good, funny moments, but then, like you said, they just take them too far, take it to the extreme, and it just it falls flat in certain points. With that being said, your story aspect of it, if you had to give it on our grading scale, what would you what would you say your grade is for the story itself? I'm gonna give it a meh. I'm gonna say it's a low meh. A low I, meh. I, I mean, I'm looking at I'm looking at my notes here, and I'm like, I got a lot more bad bullet points than I got good. Oh, me too. Me too. But the good is just good enough to, to keep, not make it bad. To not make it bad. To keep me. To keep me interested, I never got bored during this movie. Oh, definitely not. It was enjoyable most yeah. of the way throughout. Yeah, and yeah, and I never got, I never got like actively mad. Well, except for a couple minutes, but the doctor, <laughs> I never got like actively mad at the movie. Like I can't believe this is happening. So, I mean, like I said, I enjoyed it. So I'm gonna say it's meh because there is a lot of problems with the script here. I would say, but yeah. it's not. They're not so glaring that you can't focus on for what's sure. happening for on sure. screen. So, what about you? Um, I'm gonna go right there with you. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's a it's a meh. Um, maybe a little bit higher than a low meh. Definitely nowhere close to almost being good. Like you said, I got I got more bad aspects of this movie than I do good aspects. Um, they really could have gone for something truly truly amazing here with what they with what they had offered to them. Yeah, the base uh, elements of this story. Jamie Lee coming back, and they could have made a great. Even the aspect it. they could have kept the daughter in there was still was still yeah, been a cool aspect. Definitely. Just focused on Lori more, uh, and the really? story would have been a whole lot better. Focused on that dynamic between Lori and her daughter for a little while, and then Lori's confrontation with Michael could have been um, something really really cool to see. And they just wasted a lot of potential and opportunity with this. So I'll 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 give it a, a meh on yeah. that story. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's, let's get move into acting. on to acting. Um, so I'm gonna say the good. Jamie Lee Curtis is amazing in this movie. It's the oh, best performance sure. I've ever seen her put on. <laughs> I don't know how much that's saying, but by far is her best performance. Better than H2O. Yeah, better than oh, H2O. Sure. Which I'm not saying she's bad in H2O. No. She's she's pretty decent. But what they ask her to do here is way above what they ask her to do in H2O. And I'm not saying. I mean, really, if you think about it, her character's pretty similar because she has kind of that ptsd thing going on h2o but here they really make it more realistic amp it up a lot they amp it up a lot and she pulls it off she uh i don't have any problems with any of her scenes in this movie that's why i wish they would have focused on her more drop the granddaughter character and make it all about Lori. this movie is automatically twice as good twice as good oh easily but uh i'm gonna say will Patton is the sheriff we didn't talk about him much in our story section but 
I think he does a good job. Kind of a wasted opportunity a little bit, too. A wasted opportunity. They kind of hint that there's some kind of pass between him and Laurie, but I feel like that's probably on the cutting room floor somewhere. But uh, I, I thought he did a good job. He, he, he acted real. I mean, I believed he was really terrified of Michael, and I, I thought he did a good job. And I thought that Judy Greer, she did a pretty good job. I'm not going to say it's her best performance to date, but... Uh, for what she's asked to do, she does it right. She's, you know, uh, someone who's frustrated with her mother because her mother, is, she thinks, has gone off the rails. And I think she pulls that off pretty good. The bad here, I'm going to say, uh, I'm sorry if I butcher these names too, Andy Matichek, who plays the granddaughter. I'm not sure if it's so much her acting as it is the writing. But Maybe just, with a better story or her not being in the movie. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just never care for her character. She's not helping things out. She's uh, she's just kind of an average, you know, slasher film teen. I mean, nothing extraordinary about her. Like I said, I think that probably that might have more to do with the writing than her acting. Same thing with uh, the the guy who plays the doctor. I'm really gonna butcher this name. Halleck Milgener. I'm not sure how to say that. Close enough, man. I'm not. Again, probably more the writing than his acting, but he just really, he never pulls off, it, it is a little bit his acting, because he never, he never comes off as threatening, even when he, even when he puts the on world. the mask, even and when like he puts stabs on the mask, oh, it's, it's, it's more goofy than it is anything else, and he never comes off as menacing, which is a real problem, if you're going to pull that plot twist, you need someone who's going to come off as creepy, so yeah, I thought, I thought his, his acting, his character overall, it was just... This is all bad. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, with that all being said, I'd give the acting... I'm going to give it an overall good simply because Jamie Lee Curtis, I thought, did such a phenomenal job. She was exceptional. And carried this movie. And like I said, Will Patton and Judy Greer, both of them, they also really help as a supporting cast carry this movie. So I'm going to give it a good. I 100% agree with you fully on Jamie Lee. This is probably her best performance i've ever seen from her she is great for lack of better words her character in this movie is kind of kind of a badass she uh she really goes all out in this movie seeing her holding these guns is kind of odd to see for for jamie lee and as Lori strode the character but it's really cool to see her be the kind of person that she is in this movie and how she acts in this movie is 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 it's it's exceptional um will Patton, like you said does a pretty good job and i think it would have been cool had they talked about that backstory that looked like was somewhere in there between her and and jamie lee's character but um they never really explored that so that was kind of a missed opportunity um judy greer does a really good job in the movie her her dynamic with jamie is is really good and i think they really pull off that um that estranged relationship they have as a mother and daughter having been taken away from her mother at a young age and growing up the way she did when she was younger, the aspect that they have and how, how that's translated into their later lives and, and Judy Greer's character's adulthood, um, she really pulls off well. The actress who plays the granddaughter, what was her name you said? Um, Andy, Andy Matichek. Her character overall doesn't work for me, and I think that's probably why I'd say the acting on her part is bad. I have not seen her in anything else, so I can't tell you if she is a bad actress or not, but overall, just that character and the way it was written makes her acting a low point for me, as well as uh, as well as the man who plays the doctor doesn't work for me either. His character is kind of pointless in the movie for me, also. And I think without his character, I, I mean, I've also not seen him in anything else, so I can't tell you if he is a good or bad actor or not. But judging solely on this movie and how he acts in this movie doesn't work for me. And his character itself is is not necessary. And some of his moments in the movie are completely unnecessary. So um, overall, acting based on Jamie Lee and... Uh, and Will Patton and Judy Greer alone, I'm, I'll give it a good. Uh, let's go ahead and get into uh, the directing, I guess, or technical aspect of this movie. This is pretty much we're going to talk about everything else we haven't talked about yet, and we're going to lump it into this last section. For the good, I said the direction, uh, David Gordon Green's direction overall, I thought was good. I thought there were some really tense moments that he was able to pull off, uh, and I thought he was able to get pretty good a really good performance out of Jamie Lee, pretty good performances out of most everybody else. Um, the gore effects were great in this movie. Uh, there's a couple scenes in, in particular that, that really stood out. Um, the scene where he smashes the doctor's head yeah, and with that's his foot, great. that was... Where he's, 
where uh, we're looking through the window inside a house and he stabs the girl through the neck. I thought that was Perfect. pretty impressive. Um, I even liked the aspect of, I guess, the granddaughter's friend. Um, he was stabbed and then and hung on a gate the, through his yeah, mouth yeah. and head. That was that was good. That was pretty rough too. The soundtrack for this movie is great. I mean, John Carpenter and I believe yeah. I guess what what is what is it? His son. Yeah, his son. Helped work and on this. Someone else they said was accredited. Um, yeah, I mean, mostly it's just derivatives of the original track, but it is great. And even that kind of like electric guitar thing they got going through some of the movie, I really liked. Um, mainly. Michael's mask and just his overall appearance is great. I really appreciate it. If you noticed, uh, at the, in the during the first act, Michael when he's in it is unmasked. I mean, you never really see a full. They never like show you a full on like shot yeah. of his face. But you do ca- cl- catch a couple of glimpses of his eye, and it, you could tell it's like scarred over from where Laurie in the first film, you know, put a hanger through his eye. I really appreciated that because I that would have been easy to forget and just kind of like you know let go. But um, so that's good. Um, bad. I thought the sound design was kind of hit and miss. I'll talk about one scene in particular. In the tra- if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the scene where he picks up the hammer and he walks in the house, and in the trailer, it like you can hear him like a really solid thump to this woman's head. In the film, and I don't, this might have been the auditorium we were in maybe i don't know the thud seemed really muted like it didn't sound it, yeah you're right it did sound kind of muted and then you got more of a like a like, like a squishing sound kind of like he was just like continuously beating her head in which yeah. you kind of heard and then all you could hear was like a mushy like wet sound yeah i was really looking for a good little thump. but uh but I, you know that that just kind of I don't know that kind of bothered me. I felt at times the music could have been louder. Like when they cut in with that main theme, it could have been a little more. That also again could be in your face. Could be attributed to the auditorium we're in. Yeah, that could have been attributed. Like it's an older theater we go to. So. Yeah, to the especially the title sequence. I thought they could have ramped up that volume a little bit. Speaking of the title sequence, uh, I did appreciate how they had like the original font and the original color and the jack-o'-lantern off to the side. This time it was inflating instead of, you know, rotting or whatever. But uh, I really appreciated how I, I kind of like how they made the, uh, how they also made the font look kind of grainy like it was old was yeah, really cool too. that was cool. Oh yeah, and my last thing I was going to talk about, uh, the kills, I mean... They were telegraphed, as they always are in this slasher movie. But my biggest problem is, if you've watched the trailers, you've pretty much seen most of the kills in this movie. Um, the lady that's a, the journalist. Yeah, the journalist. See which her kill. is an homage to H2O. Definitely. If you've seen H2O, there's a scene where there's a woman in the bathroom. He actually doesn't kill that woman in that movie, but he does stalk her. Then the, the closet, which that's an homage to Halloween 4 when Jamie Strode is terrified michael's in her closet or whatever um you've seen the one where he walks up behind the lady in her house and then the kills lady her. in her house and it kills her uh, um, seen the kill where he kills the lady in her house with the hammer yeah I've, i saw a trailer or a tv spot or something where you can see him kill or about to kill jamie's or Lori's son-in-law uh walking up behind him from the car so, like I said, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen most of the kills in this movie. But, you know, that's about all i got to say about that. Um, so, overall, uh, as far as directing and technical aspects of the film go, I'm going to give it a good. Because, like I said, the gore effects, which are obviously really important for a slash movie, they're great. Soundtrack's great. Overall, I thought the direction was good. Michael looks great. That's really, I mean, that's really all you can ask for in a movie like this. I'm going to give it a good. All right, so for my directing slash, I guess, technical aspects of the movie, direction from David Gordon Green, not bad, not bad. Um, He's definitely more known for his comedy, and sometimes that shows. He does do a pretty good job of building some tension in certain scenes, and I and, and I liked it. Um, And he did get a pretty good performance uh pretty good really good performance out of jamie lee so i'd say his direction overall is pretty good the gore like you said great mention it again the one scene where michael takes his foot and just smashes that man's head in looked absolutely amazing i i in the theater out loud said wow okay it was pretty brutal and i was thoroughly impressed with how it looked Um, i don't i don't think they were quite rob zombie brutal um except for that one scene i think that one scene in particular was probably about on par 
just Rob Zombie's entire films are yeah that's that way the entire way, <laughs> the entire way through. But uh, the effects, the, the gore effects, were were really good. I liked how the majority of the first half, before toward the end of the movie, it kind of um, most of the gore is implied at the at the beginning of it. It never really shows most of the kills. Um, you kind of just hear the kill, and then it goes back, and you the camera will pan through whatever room or or area there was there, and you'll see the aftermath of it, and and how how it looks afterwards. And I thought that was really cool. Um, soundtrack, as always, John Carpenter does an amazing job. Even though it is derivative of his original of his original soundtrack, it's still it's still a really good a really good uh, really good score and soundtrack. Michael's mask looks absolutely amazing in this movie. I would almost say it's probably my favorite mask of the entire series. I might even put it above the first Halloween, even though it's probably the same mask. I would almost put it above that first one just because of the way it looks and how matted and old it looks. Um, and it really adds to his um, his creepy level. And um, one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie is when he walks out of that bathroom and walks out to the trunk, opens it up, grabs the mask out, and puts it on, closes the trunk, and then, and then you see him in his mask and, and the coveralls for the first time completely. Absolutely great. The sound design, like you said works for me for the most part there are certain scenes that like like we've already said could probably be attributed to the theater that we're in considering the fact that it's an older theater in a more rural part of the country um it's possible that it's just not that great a sound in the theater but there were certain parts that just worked better for me than others um i liked some of the some of the the sound design for it because some of the kills you could definitely could definitely hear and you're like wow that sounded brutal or wow that sounded about like i would imagine that would sound like if you were actually like you know stab someone through the throat or something <laughs> um do you imagine that often no okay <laughs> sure. i'll also agree with you on the fact that the kills um too many of them are shown in the trailers you see the journalist being killed in the in the bathroom lady being killed in her house we also see uh who else do we see get killed in the trailers you see the other lady in the house. You other see the, lady. the old lady that has the hammer to the head. Yep. You see the brother-in-law get killed if you've watched enough of the trailers. Yeah. You see, uh, yeah, the girl when he comes out of the closet at her. Yeah, the the babysitter or whatever. Um, I, that's probably about it. So, uh, with that, with all that being said, I'd probably say that my directing slash technical aspects of the movie, I'd probably give a probably give a low good, not 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 too shabby, but not the best. Um, all right, so uh, drum roll is what we've been waiting for. After going all of our aspects, we got story, acting, and then our, we'll call it hodgepodge for now. Overall score, good, bad, or meh. What do you got? I'm going to give it good. I, I really did, I really thought about this. Was it going to be meh? Was it going to be good? I barely tipped toward the side of, the side of good because I, I really started thinking about it. How much of this, if I, if this was not part of a franchise and... I was not a fan of said franchise. And I just went into this thinking, oh, it's just going to be, this is a slasher movie, what I think about it. How much would you have really enjoyed it? How much would I have really enjoyed it? Now, and yeah, and if I would have just went into this and all I knew was that it was a slasher movie and I didn't know who Michael Myers was and all this, this is a really solid slasher movie, I mean, compared to the competition. And I think they did a lot of things right. Even as a fan, I think they did a lot of things right. Like I said, they, they treated Michael Myers well. They treated the character of Lori really good. Uh, even though there are a lot of the aspects of the story I didn't like, I thought overall, all things considered, it, it deserves a good. I think if you are a fan of the Halloween franchise or just a fan of slashers or horrors in general, you'll probably you should, have a good time. You'll have a good time with this movie. You should definitely go see it. I will also give it a good. I'll agree with you. Mine might be a little bit higher. Um, considering the fact I'm a little bit newer to the franchise... Um, I'm kind of still riding the high. I've seen all the movies, and I I thoroughly enjoyed the movie, and I walked out overall pretty satisfied. Certain aspects, like like you also said, just didn't work for me. Could have been completely cut out. No one asked for the granddaughter to be in the movie. No one asked for her entire storyline to be in the movie. Didn't ask for a teen romance drama. Didn't ask for that buddy cop scene. Just didn't ask for that doctor. Those aspects brought it brought it down some for me, but. Um, when you have Jamie Lee coming back and being Laurie Strode and 
the character that they made her in this movie and the way that Michael is presented in this in this movie um, bring it right back up for me and uh, I really enjoyed it and I think you should probably definitely go watch it if you're a fan yeah definitely so um, so last discussion episode we ranked all 10 Halloween films so where would you put it yeah um, I would I would put it at number two I would say this is, this is the best sequel so far. I would I would actually say that it's not it's not leaps and bounds above Halloween two or H two O for me. I think those three movies, that being Halloween two, H two O, and this film right here, are pretty close for me as far as entertainment value goes. All of them pale in comparison to the original still, even this one. But um, but yeah, I I think it edges out Halloween two just from you know a production value standpoint pretty much. Um, I think it just edges out Halloween 2 for my second favorite Halloween film. If I had to rank it, now this hasn't been much of a uh, of a war, but I'm going to go ahead and agree with you again. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I promise, and... listeners, eventually we're going to come Eventually we'll start movie. arguing. Because there are movies out there that we have argued about. That's, that's true. A Star is Born is one of them. We'll talk about yeah. it at a later time. <laughs> I'd definitely probably put it number two. Um, certain aspects of it really had it gone the direction that I wanted it to have, to have gone would be a lot higher than number two, but there are certain aspects about number two that I think I can I can enjoy more than this movie, and there are a lot of aspects I can really enjoy about this movie a lot more than number two. Is it better than H2O for me? Definitely. H2O wasn't the greatest, but it's still better than the majority of the other films. Um, so I definitely would put this at, at number two in my book. Yeah. I said that what allows Halloween 2 to, for me to stay pretty close to this film Halloween 2 is consistent from beginning to end. You know yeah. what you're getting. They don't ever go off some some wild tangent. It's pretty much central on him going to the hospital, looking for Lori, that's it. This film, the central plot story of, you know, him trying to reunite with Lori, Michael trying to reunite with Lori, is great. They just get off on too many of these side stories with the granddaughter and the evil doctor and everything else. So, um... With all that being said, so that's I think that concludes our discussion of Halloween. Halloween, which is the third film yeah, first to be had, titled Halloween in 40 years. First we had John Carpenter's Halloween, then we had Rob Zombie's Halloween, and now we have... David Gordon Green's Halloween? Yeah, I don't think that's going to be... One thing we did yet. not talk about in this, mo- in, in, in this review, Nick Castle comes back and, and reprises his role as Michael in certain scenes. Yeah, in certain scenes. I, I, I get Couldn't tell imp- you which scenes they were. Yeah, I get the impression that uh, James Jude Courtney plays him a majority of the time. But I believe... Uh, but Nick Castle did come back for a few scenes. And that's nice, you know. Just, it's cool, yeah. It's kind of like how in Star Wars they let... Uh, what's his name? Peter Mayhew reprise his role as Chewbacca. In certain scenes, he couldn't do the more physically demanding scenes but you know it's nice to let him do that do that yeah with all that being yeah. said what do we got coming up next week man so next week we uh we thought we would we were going to do 100 killer but then we got to thinking about it and we're like that movie's going to be awful we, we honestly don't know if we really care enough for it so yeah so instead being at halloween we decided yeah i was thinking what what horror classic horror film could we do and i don't know how classic this is <laughs> But it's an older horror film, and it has a remake coming out. A very controversial remake, I hear. Uh, Suspiria. Um, so I'm, I'm going to hunt that movie down. We're going to watch it sometime this give, week. Give it a watch. And we will review it as our film next week. And our discussion episode. Discussion episode. Well, we're we're going to talk about that as well. Um, yeah. Talk about our... Uh, since last week, we, did, uh, our, we ranked our Halloween films as well as uh, did our top five favorite slashers. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do top five favorite horror films for for that Halloween holiday. Yeah, uh, which might include some different movies, might include some not different movies. We don't yeah. know. We we'll but, find out. Um, we'll also talk about the uh, the movie news that we find out, or have found out this week, or uh, or we'll find out in the time between now and the time that we'll record that episode. So uh, yeah. Also, uh, we might do top five films involving <laughs> witches because *The Spirit* does involve witches. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and place a limit. 
one Harry Potter film on that list. Okay, that's fair because I enjoy Harry Potter a little too much. Yeah, so. yeah. Dylan would have all five of them. Harry all Potter five films. Harry Potter's my entire witch list. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, we're gonna we're gonna call it a franchise and we'll we'll have it as one. That's fair. That's but, fair. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna talk about as our discussion. Um, do we have anything else we need to discuss? Uh, I think that about wraps it up. We uh, about wraps it up. We really hope you you have enjoyed this and that you're sticking with us this far. Yeah. Uh, um, don't forget, if you want to contact us, you can get a hold of us at dnafilmwars at gmail.com, all lowercase. No spaces. No spaces. We are up on Stitcher. I believe we are up on iTunes now. Yep, we should be. We obviously, we're up on SoundCloud. Up on Google Play. Up on Google Play. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, tune in. Yeah. I'm not real familiar with that service. Honestly, the other day I just went through and... Submitted uh, our RSS feed as many as I Hopefully, could. it should be up on Spotify soon. So yeah. uh, keep a lookout for uh, for all those all those all those platforms. Again, thanks for joining us. I've been Dylan. I'm Dan Aaron. I've waited for forty years. He will be killed tonight.